Hi, and welcome back to Quality Check. Today, we're going to talk about, well, something that I had very mixed feelings about going into it. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the shadows. Oh, boy. Alright, so, if you keep up with my reviews at all, straighten this over here, you can't see that, um, you would know that I absolutely loathed the original Michael Bay produced film. Um, I already have a very rocky relationship with Michael Bay in general, but I can't blame him for my hatred of that movie. He only produced it. I mean, it does have a lot of his stink on it. But, you know, hey, what do you expect? It's a Platinum Dunes film. The odds are really against it being good when you come from a company. That sounds like a place where things go to die. Uh, so, there were a lot of problems with the first film. And it really, go just, just to lay it all out here, this movie seems like it wants to try and ignore that those things happened. Which is actually kind of a positive in a way. Because they were problems. I mean, yeah. Why would you want to keep problematic things? It does not get rid of all of the problems. It doesn't erase every single problem. Because, by far, the worst thing from that film is still in this movie. And that thing is Megan Fox. Because if there's anyone I actually loathe more than Michael Bay, it's probably Megan Fox. Between her being a really shitty person towards people... Fans, especially, um, and just being one of the worst actresses or actors in general that I've ever had to sit through at anything. Like, I've never seen a good Megan Fox performance. If she ever does a great one, I will give her a claim. I will. I will say, well, she's a shitty person, but hey, she did one good movie. But yeah. It's just another wooden plank performance from our favorite piece of wood. Our favorite 2 by 4 Miss Fox. Who the movie still wants you to think of as a pure sex object, despite the fact that she kind of looks horrifying in parts. I don't know, it's just like... I don't know what makeup they're putting on her, but she looks more gaunt in this film. Like, she looks like she's dying. <laughs> I don't want to, I'm not criticizing, I don't want to criticize her physically. Because I'm not that kind of person. I don't care what you look like. It's more about who you are as a person. But who she is as a person is a terrible person, so I don't really feel bad for saying anything negative about her. But she doesn't look good here. They keep wanting you to think of her as a sex object, but she looks progressively less sexy. Just... And I don't think she ever looks sexy. I've never found Megan Fox attractive personally. I mean... A lot of people say it's just because I'm a demisexual, and that because of that I have a jarred viewpoint in regards to finding think finding people attractive. But I think she's just average. Mm -hmm. There's a, uh, I mean, there's actresses that I I enjoy aesthetically. I can I can appreciate a, wo a woman on screen. For being very attractive, that doesn't mean I want to bone her. 
don't want to stick it door, you know what I'm saying? Ah! No. But, but um, yeah, she's never been one of them. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to tell you. But, um, let's actually weigh the pros and cons of this film, alright? I'm not going to give you a play-by-play -play of the entire film. I'll, I, if I do that, I'll save that for an actual review later on. Right now, we're going to go through the pros and cons of this film. Because it does have pros, and it does have cons. We've already talked about one of those cons being Megan Fox returning to her role as April O'Neil. Please recast her if you make another movie. Please. Please. More people will, will probably see your movie if you just get rid of Megan Fox. I, I have to say that that would probably happen. I, anybody. Just anybody. Fucking. I don't know. Is Ron Jeremy busy? Get him to squeeze into the fucking, like, green, uh, yellow jumpsuit. I was going to say green jump. Yellow jumpsuit. Put him in the yellow jumpsuit with a red wig. I don't care. Anyone. Anyone but Megan Fox. I'll wear the jumpsuit. You don't even have to pay me. I can do better than her. I'm not even an actor. Look at me. Look at me. Look, look at, look, look at this. Look at this. Look, I ain't got no baps. Ah. No. Okay. So, pros. Number one, the turtles are the centerpiece of the film. <gasps> A Ninja Turtles movie about the Ninja Turtles? Joy! Who would have thunk it? I totally expected it to be about human characters again. You know, like the last movie. Alright, number two, the turtles actually have personalities and define characters outside of one scene. When in the first movie they only had the one scene where they actually felt like the turtles. Being the elevator scene, the notorious elevator scene. That everyone said, well that was a cool scene. Yeah, one scene. One. One fucking good part in a steaming pile of rancid buffalo shit. That does not excuse what happened. Alright. In this film, they actually have personalities. They do. Which is great, because I actually liked the voice actors. Even That was one of the things I probably glazed over, is the voice actors in the first film that actually play the, the characters were perfectly alright. They sounded like what you'd expect the turtles to sound like. Um, matter of fact, they have a close similarity to the Nickelodeon show that's currently going. So, there's that. I'm sorry if I'm rubbing my nose. I just got a lot of itch right there. It's just right there. Ah! Ah! So, that's good. That's a big pro. Two big pros, and they're both about the turtles. There you go. That's two things. Um, number three, Bebop and Rocksteady are in this movie. Holy shit, Bebop and Rocksteady are in this fucking movie? That's great. Bebop and Rocksteady. Awesome. And you know what? I actually like both the guys they got to play them. They they did it well. Is this wrestler Seamus? And the guy who did the voice of Uncle Ruckus, who I cannot remember the name of, Right now, I am sorry, I know it, and I can't think, because of drug addled brain, because of allergies. Ah! Fuck! Alright. <laughs> Let's not go off topic here. Yeah, there, there, I... I like them. Alright, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna defend it as like, they were great performances of the generation! No, they, they were, they were Bebop and Rocksteady. Um, they weren't a perfect representation of Bebop and Rocksteady, but we'll get to that in the cons, alright? We'll get to that in the cons. Um, the Shredder's in this film, and he's not a Transformer. That's good. 
Uh-huh. Awesome. Because you know what? The Shreddertron was stupid. Shreddertron was stupid. It was stupid, piled on top of stupid, and it made a stupid sandwich. And in the middle was Megan Fox. And she was just squeezing out the sides! I'm sorry. I keep going on about Megan Fox. I really need to stop. Um, <laughs> I just hate her so much. I really do. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, oh, Will Arnett actually gets to be Will Arnett more in this film. He barely got to really exude any Will Arnettness in the first film, which was disappointing as all hell, because Will Arnett is hilarious. He gets to do Will Arnett in this film. I don't know if I should include this part as, as a pro. Casey Jones is in the film. I know some people are excited about that. I like Casey Jones. Having them acknowledge him, I guess, is a pro. We'll get to more on that. Krang. Krang is in this film, too. Um, I like Krang's design. And moving on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you almost get to see the Tekken drone, too, so that's nice. Like, yeah, we'll get, we'll get to that, too. Alright, so those are pros. Oh, and the final pro, Megan Fox is barely in the movie. I don't even worship any deities, but I feel like my prayers have been answered, and I didn't even pray Thank you for not putting her in the entire movie. She's not a central character in this film. It makes me so happy. I am so happy I can barely contain myself. Oh my god. Yeah. She's still in the movie. She still does have some, some plot points to the film. But she could honestly just kind of she could be kind of cut out of the movie very easily I mean it's not that hard to I mean they could still use like Vern or you know, I'm I, I'm sorry I don't want to call him Vern Vern sounds stupid this is not an Ernest fucking P. World skit his name is fucking Vernon he's Vernon Finlick alright they could do this shit with Vernon alright you don't really need April in this film, really. They just throw her in because fan service that the fans don't really like because Megan Fox sucks <laughs> and no one really likes her except for people who don't really count themselves as fans and they're only here to see an action movie. <laughs> Alright. Um. The final pro, I will say, is that the movie ends with the original theme song, like a, like a cover. It's a cover of the original theme song, but it's the original theme song during the credits. And it was great. I stayed through the entire thing. I loved it. It, it made me smile. That was the thing. All, most of these pros were things that actually made me smile. Nothing, nothing in the first film made me smile. There were parts in this movie that made me smile. I did not regret paying to see this movie. I did not. That is a plus, a pro in and of itself, okay? Alright, now let's talk about the cons. Because there are some. Alright, number one, the writing. Oh boy. The writing in this film is still really bad. Not as bad as the first movie, alright? But it's bad. It's really fucking bad. They, like, they tried to make room for some, you know, lots of little wink nudge things to, like, the hardcore fan base, right? And 
great. I'm happy about that. That's that's wonderful. But the writing is still so fucking bad. Oh my god. Oh. I mean, I'm just gonna count that as as the first con all on its own. Like I, to to go into depth about other things, would be to take away some of these other cons. And I want to give each one of these cons its own little segment here. All right. So moving to the second con. This is one that got on my nerves because I'm a fan of the character, Casey Jones. Yeah, he's in the movie, and I did count that sort of as a pro because. You like Casey Jones. But the con is that he's not really Casey Jones. He is Oliver Queen with a really dopey, shitty sense of humor. Who likes hockey? Also, he's a cop. Did it, did anyone who did 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 they even know who Casey Jones is? Did they just see a picture of him with a hockey stick and a mask, and they thought he was just a guy who was into hockey? And then they could just make up the other shit because nowhere has Casey Jones ever been a cop. This is as dumb, in my opinion, as the whole Vernon and April possibly being a couple thing. Which still gets a bit of lip service in this fucking film. But I'm not going to count that as a con because that's a stupid thing from the first movie. And we're not going to count most of those stupid things, alright? No, we're not going to go down that road because if we do, we're just going to drown in it. Uh. So yeah, Casey Jones kind of sucks in this movie. He's really dopey and kind of annoying. He only wears the mask for one scene, and you can't, April can't understand him under the fucking mask, and it, I'm just like, does this mean they're not going to let him wear the mask for the rest of the movie? Yep. He doesn't wear the mask for the rest of the movie. Oh boy, you brought Casey Jones only to make him look and act nothing like Casey Jones. Thanks. You have made a Casey Jones who is now more annoying then the Nickelodeon TV show Casey Jones, who is the most, who was the most annoying version of Casey Jones to this point. <sighs> and I love that show. I just think Casey's really fucking annoying in it. But, you know, to be fair, he is a teenage jock asshole, so... Um... Next con, Tyler Perry. What do I say? He's fucking Tyler Perry. He's just every goofy, terrible, nerd stereotype there possibly is in this film. He doesn't act anything like Baxter Stockman. Even when Stockman was in the cartoon, he didn't quite act like this. Matter of fact, that's, that's a sad thing. He is more nerdy than the super nerd white guy version of Baxter from the old 87 cartoon. Wow. That is a level of bad that I did not anticipate. Tyler Perry. I hope you went in a Razzie for your performance in this movie because you deserve it. Oh, man. Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Terrible. And the Shredder just kind of throws him away at the end, too. For no reason. So he's not really... I mean, he's just like, it feels like he has no, no point. No point at all. Nope. Just Tyler Perry making a cameo. Yeah, it's not fair to say it's a cameo. He is treated like one of the main bad guys, even though he never does anything, really. Except for be the deus ex machina of fucking Shredder's Enterprise here. Um, 
Uh, all right, we have the Shredder in this movie, but he has been recast. He and Karai have been recast. Karai is barely a character in this film, so we're not even going to talk about her. She's not even... She's just... Look, female ninja. Moving on. <laughs> but the Shredder... Man. Prison. Prison has been good to him. Because you remember how fucked up his face was in the first movie? All gone. He just has some, like, random, like, light scars. That horribly, like, mutilated, malformed, burned-looking face. That all scarred a tissue head. Yeah, it's he's got a full head of hair, top knot, fucking beard goatee thing going here. He looks great. I haven't seen the Shredder look this good in a long time. It's amazing. He hasn't looked this good since the 87 cartoon. Shredder, I don't know who your dermatologist is, but they must be pretty fucking good. So, that was dumb. And I expected dumb. And I did get dumb. So that was dumb. Speaking of dumb, the bad thing about Ro Bebop and Rock City is that, and this is another con, while I did enjoy them, and that they, they do kind of act like themselves, they kind of don't act like characters, but more like caricatures, kind of like the Ninja Turtles were in the first of these films, yeah, the last film that was made. Um, because they're just these big, dumb thug guys who admittedly are funny. They they do make me they did make me laugh. I cracked up. I think part of it might have been just my joy at seeing live action versions of Bebop and Rocksteady, but um I, I did enjoy them myself, but they there's problems with them because they just kind of shrug off the fact that they've been mutated into uh horrible mutant monsters. And there's another con relating to them. And that is the fact that they get mutated in the, the explanation for why they turn into a rhinoceros and a wild boar is quite possibly the stupidest, most nonsensical thing I have ever heard in any film, Tyler Perry, in the film, says they're reverting to their ancestral DNA. Are you telling me that Bebop and Rocksteady's families, their ancestors, were a rhino and a warthog? Do you, do you know how evolution works? Because I'm pretty sure we didn't evolve from random animals. I'm fairly certain that that's not how that is. I would actually be willing to stake a lot of money that I do not have on the fact that that's not how that works. But that goes back to the shitty writing. So we're not going to go too deep into that, but that's really stupid. It needs to be talked about. Wow. Just fucking... Wow. It's amazing. It really is. I feel like I'm going to turn into Tommy Wiseau and just... Just go into acting overdrive. Because it's tearing me apart! Alright. Alright, the last real con I have with the film is Krang. Now, I did say I like Krang in this film. I did. I do like the design of Krang. I do like the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to combine this con with, with the Terradrome thing, too. Um, Krang, in the old cartoon... And even kind of in the new cartoon, he always kind of had this this great voice. 
like, Gargles, I will get you better. You know, like that. It is always a very iconic voice, and they kind of keep it in the new show. I think Roseanne did, did the voice for one of the, for the like the Krang Supreme Leader, the Krang Prime. She she did kind of the thing with that, and I liked it. It was, it was good. Um, in this movie, Krang just it sounds like a really deep throaty guy. <laughs> there's, there's no like mulching or weird voice. It's just. I have a deep voice and I talk like I got golf balls in my mouth. <laughs> uh, I wasn't feeling it. Uh, I would have really preferred they gone for something a little more. They could have gotten the original voice actor. I mean, honestly, I'm pretty sure they would be willing to come back and do the role. You know that would have made people happy. I mean, really, that would have been one less thing for fans to complain about. Look at me, I'm sitting here complaining about it. Whoa! The second part of this con is the fact that the Terradrome, yes, is in this film, but it kind of is, because it has to be built. Because the portal apparently is not big enough for the whole thing to come through, so it just flies through with like little pieces and all I can think of is is this what the Tetris movie is going to look like? Is this what Tetris the movie is going to be? Just like, is it going to be like Battleship? Or it's just like an alien battleship but now it's alien Tetris pieces coming to invade the earth. Yeah. It felt silly. You got to see it for just like, it was like completely almost completely built, and then you saw the big eye, and I was like, oh, that's cool, and then the turtles attached a little thing to a drone, and it, like, went back through the portal, and it dragged all the pieces out, <laughs> so you only saw it assembled for, like, oh, it was a few seconds, it's gone now, and then Craig just like, oh, oh, yeah, you turtles. I was going to do the real Krang voice, but that's not what he sounds like in this movie, so we're just going to... <laughs> oh, um, overall, this wasn't terrible. I mean, I'm not going to say it was great. It was better than the first movie, clearly. Uh, the fact that I got any enjoyment at all tells you that it was better. Um, uh, I don't know, um, I might even watch this again. I know it's shocking. I normally don't like to watch movies, the, like, especially since I hated the first one so badly. I'm a little shocked that the second one I'm kind of alright with. It's, I mean, it's not great. I wouldn't buy it brand new. Maybe if I saw it at a discount bin. I might be willing to pay, like, like, Walmart discount bin price for it. I would... The only way I would ever buy the first one is if I was going to light it on fire. <laughs> I'm not joking. I would light that movie on fire. Yeah. <laughs> not even, Not even kidding about that. That movie deserves to be lit on fire. Uh, uh, would I recommend this? I mean, it's worth a watch. It's a it's a dumb popcorn movie. That's really what it is. It's just a dumb popcorn movie. It's, you know... It's not going to be... You, you don't go into it expecting it to be as well-written or serious as the old 1990 Ninja Turtles film, or even in The Secret of the Ooze. Um, but as far as just something that's trying to be fan servicey and has some pretty, it's some, some better done visuals and actual genuine character moments with your lead characters, yeah, it's it's perfectly alright. It's alright. 
it's not great, but it's all right. That's that's my final verdict. So, yeah, there you go. If you want to check it out, go for it. But you better hurry, because it's probably only going to be in theaters for a very short amount of time. So, yeah. Hell, it might not even be in theaters when this video goes up. Sorry. Maybe you can find it in a discount theater. Otherwise, you get away from video. Sorry. You think I like Ninja Turtles? Do you know if I like Ninja Turtles? You want to? You want to know if I like Ninja Turtles? You want to know if I like Ninja Turtles? Here. Can't point. Look, he's Leonardo, and there's Shredder. Do I like Ninja Turtles enough? Do I? Do I? Am I a real? Fan?